With over 100 cryptocurrency wallets available, it can be tricky to know how to pick the right one for you. My name is Nat and welcome to the Imperial Wealth YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to have a look at our top seven picks for the best cryptocurrency wallets. Choosing a safe and easy to use crypto wallet is one of the most important things to get right when owning cryptocurrency. Beginners tend to keep their coins on exchanges where they bought the crypto, basically giving up control and trusting the exchange to keep their tokens safe for them. An exchange wallet that doesn't allow you complete control over your coins is called a custodial wallet. The best practice when storing cryptocurrencies is to move your coins off the exchanges and into non-custodial wallets, which is a wallet that you can control. So if a centralized exchange gets hacked, you can potentially lose all of the cryptocurrency you were storing on that exchange. Moving the cryptos off the exchange into your private wallets is a much better way to keep control over your cryptocurrency. We can generally put cryptocurrency wallets into one of three categories. That is either a software wallet, a hardware wallet, or a hot wallet. A software wallet will usually be an application that you install on your desktop computer or an app for your smartphone. A hardware wallet is an actual hardware device. It's also known as a cold storage wallet or an offline storage wallet. And a hot wallet is usually referred to as a browser extension. And they are the most risky types of wallets. So in order of risk, usually the hardware wallets are the safest place to keep your crypto. The software wallets or application wallets are, you know, medium security. And the hot wallets are the most easy to get hacked and lose your crypto. So a lot of people who have been in cryptocurrency for a while will keep the main bulk of their long term storage in a hardware wallet. They will have, uh, you know, a fairly good chunk of their crypto in their software wallets, which they can use to send to an exchange if the price goes up high and they want to trade it for another crypto or sell some. And um, so a lot of your operating capital will be in the application wallets. And then the main reason that you would have a hot wallet is so that you can interact with decentralized applications. So if you want to uh, swap one crypto for another on a decentralized exchange, you can also use hot wallets to interact with things like NFT marketplaces and a host of other decentralized apps. So let's jump in to our seven picks across all three categories. Our first pick is the Exodus wallet. And this actually fits into all three categories because it has a web browser extension. It has a mobile and desktop application, and it also supports hardware wallets. The Exodus wallet is a multi coin wallet, so it supports many different blockchains. At the time of filming this video, it supports 235 different cryptocurrency assets. One of the other great features about the Exodus wallet is it can interact with the hardware device, the Trezor, which we will look at shortly. The Exodus wallet has been around since 2015 and was founded by JP Richardson and Daniel Castelloni. They're two very trusted individuals within the cryptocurrency space. And the Exodus wallet was actually the first crypto wallet that I installed and started to use. And I have been very happy with the experience. It's always been easy. I use the wallet to store my crypto when I've purchased some on an exchange. I send it from the exchange to the Exodus wallet. I also mine Bitcoin and there's an automatic process where the Bitcoin that I'm mining from my ASIC miner is deposited directly into my Exodus wallet. The desktop version has a great user interface, very easy to use and with plenty of features. The second wallet we're going to have a look at is the Atomic Wallet, and it's one of the main competitors to the Exodus wallet. It's very similar. It's a multi coin wallet. You can get it on your smartphone or your desktop. It's been downloaded by over 4 million users worldwide. The great thing about the Exodus and the Atomic Wallet are they're both anonymous. You don't have to put in any details. They are decentralized and so you can actually export the private keys um, and so you have complete control. 
and they're secure. So you password protect the app on your computer and the phone so that every time you leave the app and open it up again, it requires a password. Make sure you do use a strong password and this will make it a lot harder for people to get into your cryptocurrency or for you to get hacked. Now, one of the great things about the Atomic Wallet, and this is also for the Exodus, is you can stake cryptocurrency from inside the wallet. Atomic Wallet does support a few more cryptocurrencies than the Exodus. They've got around 300 tokens. One of the best features I like, I've been using the Atomic Wallet for quite a while, is that you can actually send any ERC token. So that is a token from the Ethereum network to the Ethereum address of the wallet, and it will automatically add that token and the balance of that token to your wallet. There are literally thousands of ERC tokens. So that's a great feature within the Atomic that you can just grab your Ethereum address, send any ERC token to the wallet, and it will automatically add it for you. That's why I store a lot of my ERC20 tokens in my Atomic wallet. So I will get them off a decentralized exchange like Uniswap, using a MetaMask wallet, which is a hot wallet that we'll be covering in a minute. Then I'll send it to my Atomic wallet for more secure storage. You can also buy and sell cryptocurrency within the app and exchange one crypto for another. Um, one of the things that I got caught out with early on, you can also do that in the Exodus wallet, is the fees for swapping tokens um, or exchanging can be quite high in some of the wallets because they will send them to a third party service. And sometimes the fee is built into the exchange rate and you can end up paying a lot more. I tend to not swap cryptocurrencies within my wallets because sometimes it can be very costly, especially if it's an ERC20 token and they're doing it on the Ethereum exchange and they will take out a fee and it can be as high as $100 uh, if the network is really busy that day on the Ethereum network. So when I want to get one crypto and swap it for another, I usually send it to an exchange and then use the exchange with low fees. We do have another video about the best exchanges with low fees. We'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. So you get a lot lower fee if you do it on a centralized exchange. But if you really want to just anonymously swap one crypto for another within your wallet, the feature is there. Just know that you might pay a fee that's slightly more than you would on an exchange. The third wallet we're going to have a look at is the Trust Wallet. And this was developed by Binance, the world's largest centralized cryptocurrency exchange. This is an app for smartphones. It's available on iPhone, Google Play and Android marketplaces. All these wallets are free to download and install. This has some great features if you are really into the Binance world. So Binance have their own uh, blockchain, the BNB token is their main token. They also have the Binance Smart Chain, which is their basically their version of Ethereum for running decentralized applications. So the good thing about the Trust Wallet is that you can interact with the dApps from within the wallet. Now, while it was developed by Binance, the Trust Wallet also supports 65 of the other major blockchains such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Ripple, and many more. You can stake your tokens within the Trust Wallet and it comes with a staking calculator. So you choose which coin you're going to stake. It'll give your daily, monthly, and yearly earning estimates. You can also store NFTs in the wallet, which is a non-fungible token. You may have heard of these. This is mainly digital art collections. And currently the Trust Wallet supports the Ethereum blockchain and the Binance Smart Chain for NFTs. Now the Binance Smart Chain has a very large ecosystem of decentralized apps. So you can interact with these dApps directly from the Trust Wallet, which is great because uh, a lot of the time it's difficult to interact with dApps such as PancakeSwap uh, or OpenSea which is NFT marketplace uh, from a smartphone. So the Trust Wallet makes it easy to do that from any smartphone device. 
The next two crypto wallets that we're going to look at fall under the category of the hardware wallet. The two market leaders are the Ledger devices and the Trezor devices. The hardware wallets, also known as cold storage wallets, are one of the safest ways to store crypto assets. The only thing that's different with the hardware wallets is that there will be a price tag involved because it's an actual physical device that you'll be using to store your cryptocurrency. The two most popular Ledger devices are the Ledger Nano X, coming in at 250 Australian dollars, and the Ledger Nano S Plus, which is the slightly cheaper version, coming in at $129. The main difference between the two Ledgers is that the Nano X supports Bluetooth. The Ledger devices come with their own companion app called the Ledger Live application, but they can also be integrated with some of the other software wallets, such as the Exodus, which we looked at before. If you want to find out what cryptocurrencies are supported by the Ledger devices, you can visit their website and search for whatever asset you want. Now, they have a very good description of their website of exactly what is a hardware wallet. And they say that a hardware wallet is a cryptocurrency wallet which stores the user's private keys, which is the critical piece of information used to authorize ongoing transactions on a blockchain network, in a secure hardware device. The main principle behind hardware wallets is to provide full isolation between the private keys and your easier to hack computer or smartphone wallets. So basically what they're saying is your private keys, instead of being stored on your computer, in your browser or on your phone, they are stored offline. So you have an air gap between the net blockchain network and your private keys, making it very secure. Now the Ledger devices use a proprietary software which is not open source. However, their main competitor Trezor does have open source software. So for that reason, uh, some developers trust the Trezor a little bit more than the Ledger because all of the code is available uh, in the public domain. The Trezor comes with its own companion app, just like the Ledger, and they also have another cool feature, which is their password manager. So you can actually uh, store passwords for your other services, such as PayPal and Dropbox and uh, Zoom and Skype and things like that. You can use the Trezor wallet to make your browsing experience with these other applications more secure. Currently, there are two models available of the Trezor, and the Trezor One is probably the most affordable hardware wallet coming in at 69 euros, which is around about 100 Australian dollars. They also have a premium model with a full color touchscreen, and that comes in at around 250 euros, which is roughly 360 Australian dollars. The last two wallets we're going to have a look at are known as hot wallets. These come in the form of a browser extension. They are the highest risk category of wallets since your private keys are stored in an extension in your browser. The main reason you would be using a hot wallet is so you can interact directly with a blockchain network for the purpose of using decentralized applications. So this is my MetaMask extension here. If I click on it, it will show me uh, it's currently connected to the Ethereum blockchain. And I tend to store very, very small amounts of crypto in these wallets because uh, they can be easily compromised. This will have a list of the tokens on that network. Now, one of the great things about the MetaMask uh, hot wallet is it can be used on many, many blockchains. You can quickly and easily switch blockchain networks within your MetaMask by clicking this top drop down box and selecting any of the other networks that you have already connected your wallet to. So now I'm switching to the Phantom Opera network. Now I can switch to the Polygon network, which was previously Matic. One of the great things about the MetaMask wallet is that you can do uh, swaps within the wallet. So you can swap one cryptocurrency for another. They all have to be on that same network though. So if I want to select swap right here, I can swap some Polygon for some wrapped Bitcoin on the Polygon network. And then when I select review swap, it's going to fetch me a quote and it's going to tell me how much this is going to cost me. So the Polygon network is a very cheap blockchain network and it's telling me the fee is going to be only around one cent. This is very different on some of the other networks. 
I'm not going to swap that. I'm going to cancel. This is very different for some of the other uh, networks like the Ethereum mainnet. If I go to swap uh, some Ethereum, let's say just a very small amount of Ethereum, $15 worth of Ethereum um, for some wrapped BTC on the Ethereum network, when I go to review that swap, we are going to find that the fees are much higher. So just to swap $15 worth of Ethereum into wrapped Bitcoin on today's fees, and it depends on how busy the network is, is going to cost me roughly $8, and that's in US dollars. So you can see that um, swapping on the Ethereum network is much more expensive than some of the others. The last wallet we're going to have a look at uh, is a bit of a hybrid wallet, and this is developed by Coinbase, one of the largest uh, centralized exchanges in the world, uh, because this has both a mobile application wallet and a browser extension. It is a multi-coin wallet. It stores lots of different cryptocurrencies. And the main advantage of the Coinbase wallet is if you are a Coinbase user yourself, you can connect your Coinbase wallet directly with your Coinbase account. So it helps you in buying and selling crypto on Coinbase. Although the fees on Coinbase are around about 1%. You'll see if I go to Uniswap, which is one of the largest decentralized exchanges on the Ethereum network, and I want to connect my wallet, the top two choices are the MetaMask wallet and the Coinbase wallet. One of the cool features about the Coinbase browser extension is that you can import existing wallets into the extension and then use that one extension for multiple other wallets. You can even connect a hardware device such as the Ledger to the Coinbase browser extension. So this can be a way of uh, using decentralized apps with a hot wallet, but in a much more secure way because you're only using them when your ledger device is actually connected to the computer. So there you go. We've got the software wallets, which are the Exodus, Atomic, and the Trust wallet. The hardware wallets being the Ledger and the Trezor. The hot wallets being MetaMask and the Coinbase browser extension. We will leave a link in the description to all of these wallets if you would like to download them and use them yourself. If you found this content valuable, make sure you do subscribe to our channel for the latest in cryptocurrency news, education and our weekly podcast. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.